Hey everybody. Good afternoon, good night, good morning. Yes, welcome to another episode of Within Good News. The show, the Facebook Live show that gives you all the good news you need to hear and we all need it these days. I'm Jerry Lee Sporbley, the founder of Good News Network. You're on our Facebook page now. I'm Anthony Samadani. And I'm Mei Mei Ali with voice issues, so give me a break because my voice, I didn't have a voice for two days. Is just now coming back. Poor May May. That's all right. Tell us if you, you can it? hear her. I lost it uh, via allergies that attacked my throat, and then I started coughing, and then the coughing made me lose my voice. Jeez. Yeah. Well, so you I'm look not, great. I'm not contagious. You look great. Thanks. Well, listen, we all need some great news, and we appreciate the Good News Network always uh, boosting us and uh, making us feel good. So, May May, you want to start? Or? Okay, I'm going to start. <clears throat> so... I just want to start off by saying that when I was in college, I used to give date rape presentations at the college for uh, the college campuses so people understood the definition of date rape, rape, because a lot of kids don't know the definition and they get caught up and there is an epidemic, you know, on college campuses. So with that being said, um, there have been a couple of universities that they're addressing this issue by not allowing students with convictions, felonies, um, anything where they actually, you know, was involved in any kind of uh, sexual assault to um, get financial aid or play on, you know, any of the sports. And so the Indi uh, Indiana University just had become a trailblazer for college campus safety by announcing a new policy changes that ban student athletes with a history of sexual violence. So. You know, you know, I, th I think this is really important because um, maybe you know, as, as, as kids are going into college, parents, guardians, whomever, will start really trying to educate their daughters and sons early on about what this is so they don't, uh, you know, they don't, uh, you know, be a victim of, you know, Good not news. having the benefits. So I think all colleges should look into this. The only concern I have about this is... Make sure when you're doing the background checks that you don't wrongly identify someone yeah. who may have a situation where they weren't convicted. So as long as uh, they really vet people out the right way um, and make sure the only those who have actually committed assault yeah. uh, fall under this this new law. So that's good news. Yeah. All right. Hannah, we thanks for hearing us. She said we hear fine. Elizabeth is hi. Patricia wants to hear something good. Uh, well. All right, Anthony, go for it. Um, my first story that really resonated with me was a powerful, powerful story, and I, I'm actually going to show you guys an image in case you haven't seen it. Um, can you see a, it? Yeah, if you can there see it that, is. Yeah, they it is, can see it. It is a photo of a, of a car crash and a light beaming from the sky. And what's amazing is that there was this tragic car accident Whoa. where uh, two people had died. Whoa. And a woman took a f that was stuck in traffic took a photo so she could tell her her, her boss, hey, this is what I'm late. This is where I'm proof. at. Proof. Yeah. But when they went back yeah. and looked at the picture, there's actually two orbs looking <gasps> things that are going straight oh up that light. Oh my god! I mean, it's a really surreal. Oh my god, that it's is right. Crazy. And she sent it to the fam family's victims, uh, victims' families, and they really found peace in looking at that. I mean, there's two orbs wow. right there. So go check out that story on Good News Network. It is, it is an amazing, powerful. I mean, you can't fake that. Approach. I mean, so I was just was blown away by that and gave me chills thinking about it. And you know what's crazy about it? I've had a friend who lost. A, well, I had a family member. We lost a family member. I want to identify who they are, and the person saw their son in the car right after he was murdered, mm -hmm. and uh, she saw a light above his head and uh, so if, that's real well, folks if it brings you peace that's yeah. the best thing wow that is incredible to check yeah. that picture out yeah. yeah um libby says your voice is choppy love you guys oh, she, lost her voice. she lost is her voice oh is, is it choppy is, is our voice choppy oh. or my voice hoarse is it dropping out is it's it dropping out to know yeah let us know sorry about that okay
Maybe don't. Okay, we're back. We have a technical difficulty. Technical glitch. Is it? Ah, uh, are we live? Yeah, that's what happened. People, yeah. what happened? I think we're back. Are we we're back? back? Okay. Hey, okay, thank you. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm gonna. My story is still in the college realm. Um, since 1978, the cost of textbooks has risen. You're not gonna believe this for colleges. Textbooks costs have risen. 812%, outpacing even the cost of medical services and new housing. Nationally, students spend an average of $1,200 a year on textbooks. Wow. Within Maryland alone, two-year two and four-year students spend over uh, $223 million in textbooks. This wow. is crazy. It's a travesty. <laughs> two states are moving to reduce the huge cost of higher education by introducing open source textbooks, which is a oh, software right. platform platform for students. So let me, since this is a- I know okay. open source. I know so that. open source, I just want to get the, is that the textbooks are online? Yeah. Or they're available for anybody to use. Okay. Yeah. All right. So the University System of Maryland awarded many grants to 21 recipients across 12 different universities for converting all of their reading materials to open source software platforms awesome. between the seven Maryland community colleges and five oh, public four-year institutions. The initiative has the potential to save over 8,000 students, 1.3 million in textbook costs they over the it. fall 2017 semester. That's just over one semester. Yeah, wow. I think, you know, what I love about this, it sounds like it's like a pilot model. Yeah. And I think colleges should really look at this um, for for those who cannot afford textbooks, this is a great solution. That's a great solution. So that's what's great about this. You know, we hear about college costs is are exorbitant, they're crazy. Um, but you know, Maryland is doing something about that. Um, for you, Maryland. And New York, the New York State Governor Andrew Cuomo is also moving to invest eight million of the state budget into open source awesome. educational materials. So New York is on board. All the other states need to get on board with this. Come on, California. And, uh, you know, this is how we, you know, we hear on the news all the time, investing in the middle class, strengthening the economy, blah, blah, blah. Well, this is a way to do it, folks. This especially, is one way. Especially the kids with yeah. the student loans. I hate it when you had to work in line for those textbooks. It, oh, and the bookstore. And then you try to sell them, you couldn't the get it. bookstore, hell. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so this is just one way. But we really need to reduce those tuition fees. That's what really needs to reduce. Aaron, Aaron said that the Khan Academy started the trend, which is, is, is okay. Love cool. them. Yeah. Who went to who did it? Khan Academy. The, the, by Khan. Academy. Okay. All right. Got some smart viewers out there educating Hannah us. Hannah says we sound fine from Boulder, and Aaron and Amber, thank you guys for listening, and let, let us know where you're from, and because we know there's people from all over the world. Um, okay. Uh, the next story that really got my attention, which I thought was just like a sweet uh, thing, I, cause I remember seeing it. In uh, in France, in Paris, oh, um, yeah. Paris, the well, Paris, Paris, the famous uh, Pont des Arts. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> wow. uh, anyway, Pont des Arts, uh, Paris, where they there's a bridge where they put these padlocks, and it's like a lover saying people would mm. put these. Oh, I remember padlocks, hearing right? about that. Yeah. <clears throat> But over the years, the padlocks took so much weight that the bridge started collapsing. It did. Right? Oh, yes. So they had to actually yeah. get rid of these padlocks oh and put God. up something where you could have put padlocks. Right, right, right. But anyway, some smart, um, uh, some smart Parisian Parisian uh, ended up calling them these love locks and raised over two hundred seventy-three thousand dollars by selling these locks that were sort of cherished okay. um, in uh, sort of a charity that would help with refugee organizations well, wow. in France. Okay. So they actually ended up raising two hundred seventy-three thousand. Oh, oh. oh. sorry guys. We keep cutting off. We have sorry. High, we have this Wi-Fi in this building, and it says that we have full power, but um, unfortunately, it goes out. Okay, loud. let's keep going. Yeah. So I was talking about that. We had the, anyway. So they raised two hundred seventy-three thousand plus eighteen thousand on the bridge, all going towards organizations that are helping charities. Oh, that's great. Uh, refugees. Wonderful. So again, I, you know, taking to get tra someone's treasure is another one's uh, someone's trash is another one's treasure. Exactly. What a great, great news that someone <clears throat> ended up um, raising money for the refugees for that type of cause. I thought that was a great story. Yeah, yeah. that is a nice story. I yeah. remember seeing about those locks everywhere. Amazing how all that weight, you know, this zoom. I know, right? Yeah, McKinley when she was in Paris um, put a lock on one of the bridges, oh, wow. and she still has the key. To 
keyboard. Oh. <laughs> someone, someone purchased her lock, I'm sure. Yeah. Okay, so in Saudi Arabia, women will finally be allowed to work, study, and seek health care without needing a man's consent. This will allow millions of women to start employment in the private and public sector, pursue an education, and explore medical treatment without the written permission of a father, brother, husband, or son. This story was close to me because I'm a Muslim woman, and it's interesting because in the story I remember it saying um, Saudi joins the modern world, and as a Muslim I'm thinking Saudi joined the Quranic world, because no, no offense, but in our Quran, our holy book, the Holy Quran, uh, women don't need the consent to seek health care or work a job. Um, the Prophet of Islam, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, had a wife who, Khadija, who made m more money than he did, and she was very wealthy. And wow. so when you really study other people's religion and, or ask a Muslim about is this religion or is this culture, women not being allowed to drive in Saudi or, or seek health care without a man's permission is not religious culture. It's, it's uh, the culture of that area. So I love hearing this. And it's excellent that they are, you know, following Quranic teachings when it comes to the, 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 the freedom and empowerment of women. The ruling comes one year after the nation broke historic barriers by holding the first election in which women were allowed to vote. A total of 20 women were elected into public office after King Abdullah granted yep. women the right to hold office. And, and again, you know... That's, that's an excellent milestone. Women actually have to be a part of policy making, and mm -hmm. I'm glad Saudi Arabia is, is going in the right direction of not just allowing women to have those same freedoms, but following what their religion says in, the, in our holy book, the Holy right. Quran. So uh, good, good, good job, Saudi. Thank All you right. for educating me on yes. that. I did not know some yes. of that. Yeah, it's interesting. I'm going to jump in here with right, my little good story. story. I have hey, she got a story? I have a story, story about this coffee cup. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. It's uh, from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland. Uh, my family went there in uh, one year ago. And um, I had since had a cup just like this from, from something else, from the PS, actually, and it got broke. So I was in the gift shop searching for, because I really like this style of cup. So mm -hmm. I was searching and searching, and I found the exact style of cup. Um, and they had them all stacked up there, and I bring it up to the counter, and I tell them, uh, you know, I want to buy this. And they said, oh, that's only a promotion, promotion if you buy $25 worth of of goods or something like that, yeah. or thirty dollars worth of goods or something, and this is my expression. I mean, I'm serious. Literally, mm -hmm. I I went. Oh. <laughs> well, and then I go. Yeah. Oh, are you sure? Okay. Right. So I walk away, and I'm you know browsing with my family, and uh, and then this young man in a pink T-shirt with his girlfriend walks up to me, and he hands me. The, a box with the cup in it. Oh, cool. He said, we saw how disappointing you were, <laughs> and we bought you the cup. Oh, that's so cool. Uh, the cup was like a few bucks. You had to pay like eight bucks for it if you got a certain amount. And, she, yeah. and he gave it to me right there. I was floored. I I was so floored I didn't take a picture or a selfie or anything. Yeah. And he walked away, and then I was he later like, dang, it. why he did paid. I take a picture on the Good News yeah. Network? Yeah. I could have put it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he paid it for it. It's yeah, nice. yeah. So cheers to you in this pink cool, t-shirt. I never got it. Say thank you. And I think I mean, the I think yeah, and I think the lesson is when you when you get discouraged or you can't get what you want, do a pouty face. Don't don't cuss them out. Just go, and maybe someone will see you and feel sorry for you. Right. <laughs> or the other lesson is if cool. you see someone pouting, help them out. Yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly. Right. 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 Awesome. Any any uh. uh comments? Uh, Aaron said the goddess is often hidden from most current religious teachings, even though most older thousand plus religions begin with a strong female figure. Right. All right, all right. Uh, okay, so let's go here. So I'm not sure how many of you were affected, not many, I think, in the U.S., were from the cyber attack that had a global effect on the malware. Um, but it was all stopped by a 22-year-old. Yeah. Right, who I kind of accidentally did it, right? But his, name, his nickname is Malware Tech. Um, no one really knows who he is, but apparently he loves to surf, right? And he loves to Pizza. stop. He loves to um, to hack. He loves to hack. Not, so him not, his, in well, a good way. When him and his friends heard about the epidemic, they started mm -hmm. investigating the malware's code. And he's a British 22-year-old uh, and um, found the unregistered domain source code 
and ended up aborting it by oh. sort of accident. But you know, he purposely set himself up to try to help. Um, and so there is a company called Hacker One that rewards people for stopping these things, and they rewarded him ten grand. This twenty-two-year-old kid, who most twenty-two-year-old kids could use ten grand, mm -hmm. said, "You know what? I'm going to donate it." to um, charities that help with education. Right. Yeah. And then right. someone else found out that he loved pizza. So a UK-based food delivery service, Just Eat, offered him pizza for a year. He goes, okay, I'll probably take that. Right. Yeah. Wow. But um, what a crazy thing. Yeah. It's straight out of the That's movies. Crazy. A 22-year-old little in the basement yeah, yeah, yeah. stops a group of uh, epic this, this, uh, awesome. this, is, this uh, software, this malicious software is called ransomware. <clears throat> it takes a hold of your screen encrypts all your files and then holds them for ransom asking for money yeah. demanding money to get your files Within 24 back. hours or you got or hours and then you got to pay more wow. yeah so this thank goodness for so back up everything so you can let it go <laughs> if yeah. you need to so this is my favorite and last story um it almost brought tears to my eyes get ready for this one so Despite being told he would never succeed because he had disabilities, 29-year-old Chinese man defied all the odds thanks to his devoted mother. Uh, a young man named, his actual name is Ding Ding, cute little name, was born with cerebral palsy. The doctors told him that uh, he would never be smart enough or capable to do anything as an adult. The father wanted to give the baby up. He didn't feel it was worth raising this kind of child. Uh, the, I would say the mother's name, but I think I'll mess it up. Zhao Hongyang. Um, she kept the baby, was determined uh, to help her son. She divorced the husband over this. I think one of the reasons she divorced her husband. Um, you know, she birthed this child and she believed in this child. She took him to rehabilitation sessions. She played educational games and puzzles with him in hopes to stimulate his intelligence. She taught him how to overcome physical challenges um, properly. You know, he was able to use his chopsticks. And guess what happened to this guy? He graduated with a bachelor's degree from Peking University's Environmental Science and Engineering School in 2011 oh before being accepted into Harvard Business School for the master's program. That is awesome. So you have an institution, a medical institution, say, he will be nothing. His own father, unfortunately, he will be nothing. And this mother, nice. um, you know, she was defiant, and she remained defiant, and she went against the odds and loved that child. Oh, bless her. And I just think, you know, I, you know, the bigger picture to me in this is there. there's so many things you can do with autistic children now, especially when you start young. There's so many therapies, um, groundbreaking therapies that are happening. So don't give up on people, you know. You really shouldn't give up on people. I remember I have a friend who had a, a, a brother. With, uh, he was, you know, mentally retarded, as they said back then. And he was able to get up in the morning, clean his room, get on the bus, go to the daycare, which he called his job, go to work, go there, come back, and kind of live a great life until he passed, I believe, in his 60s of a brain tumor. But he had this great free life. And I know people that had, you know, that weren't as bad off as he was. But the family did not mm -hmm. work with them in a way to empower them. Mm -hmm. So nice. great story. Congratulations to Ding Ding and his mom. Nice Mother's Day story. Yeah, Mother's really nice. Oh, yeah, it is a good Mother's Day story. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day, by the way, to Happy all of you who've... Uh, oh, yeah. Every day is a Mother's yeah, Day. Yeah, it was. It was, it was, it was, it was the, the second was loaded. It's all good. Anyway. My last one before the lightning round, which we all seem to love, is... One of true inspiration, one of true, you know, yes. no matter what your, your circumstances, lemons to lemonade, but Andrew uh, Cal Cowlick, I forgot, can't pronounce the last name, lost both of his legs from a subway accident in Prague 14 years ago, and doctors did not believe he'd be able to properly sit down, let alone never cycle again. But then after he lost his father six years ago, he challenged himself to start participating in marathons using a wheelchair bicycle he fought off Craigslist. Okay. Now at 37 years old, He's become the first cyclist to participate in race across America using only his hands. Whoa! Starting in June. Are you serious? June 14th, he will travel 3,000 <coughs> miles from California to Maryland nice. in a span of only 12 days. What? The cyclist has reportedly been training for the event for 500 miles every weekend. 
listen, God bless you. I will be looking out for you. And hope, awesome. I'm sure there'll be some sort of donations you can do for this guy. Yeah. But if it, think about that, right? Lost yeah. both of his legs, had all the reasons to give up on whatever he wanted. Yeah. Even, you know, mm-hmm. and like, you know, thank God for your all five yeah. yep. five senses that you have, yep. right? So anyway, man, that was an incredible inspirational story. It, you know, hope and purpose, we all should find our hope and purpose, and I think that's awesome. And what are we doing when we have all of those yep. Yep. things? So. Yeah. All these stories story. are on the Good News Network and um, at goodnewsnetwork.org. And I want to say I have some good news about our business. Um, it's it's hush hush. So uh, keep it to yourself. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> we're going to launch. Uh, we're getting okay. ready to launch a Spanish version of Good News Network. Good News Network Espanol. That's so great. Look out for that. There's going to be a Facebook page, a Twitter page, yeah. and all all. Uh, uh, content original in Spanish not translated so we're looking this is a, a great big step I've went, wanted to do this for years so that's awesome, awesome. very excited Muy bueno. <laughs> Alicia says never give up you never know when a miracle will happen I'm inspired by that story the guy who's cycling thanks Alicia we, we love that ready for the lightning round let's do right. it here's some lightning good news round. good news facts okay. right now these are all this facts part. folks this is actual news this is real news okay Homelessness in Tokyo dropped 75% in 10 years. Wow. Ooh, that's a lot. Smoking fell to its lowest level in the U.S. since the 1940s. UK or U.S.? U- UK. <laughs> You're reading. <laughs> Sorry. Smoking fell to its lowest level in the U.K. since the 1940s. That's we got to get a bell. we got to get a bell. Yeah. Ding. Let's, let's yeah, yeah. We've let's got to do that. Let's do that. Lego reached their 100% renewable energy right. goal three years early. That's mm. so cool. Fukushima rice farming is finally safe at safe levels for the first time since the nuclear disaster. Wow, the city of Atlanta legislates uh, legalizes tiny houses in neighborhoods. That's awesome. So you don't have to own a big house or have a car anymore to live there. Hmm. Some coral reefs have started adapting to warmer temperatures rather than bleaching. Oh, right. didn't know they did that. Go Earth, right? They, <laughs> they, the Earth is a smart mother. Okay? Exactly. Denmark welcomes the, its first wild wolf pack in 200 years. Ooh. All right. Oh. Apple is investing $1 billion in American billion with a B jobs and, oh. in American manufacturing jobs. We need that. And finally, bullying rates fell by half in the decade from two of the... 2005 to That's 2014. Excellent. That, is, that is excellent. That's an interesting Down stat. Down to 10%. Because all we hear is with technology. And right. Obviously, if you ever watch the TV show 13 Ways, you know, on that. I, want, I haven't watched that yet. I want to be ready for it because I heard it's deep. It is deep. Be yeah. prepared. Uh, yeah. But um, but to hear that stat is a good stat. Yeah. You know, well, let's hope it it hangs on. Yeah. That, uh the study came out, you know, uh, a year after they finally finished their surveying. Cool. So. Yeah. yeah. Well, listen, this is phenomenal. Thank you so much. Thank you. Please share. Please support anything you can. We love doing this. Cheers. And uh, Check out. We'll be back next week. Yes. And, and just uh, remember one thing. Within good. Within good. <laughs>